Patterson's Appliances has been helping families like yours find quality home appliances from trusted brands including Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid for over 55 years. Our knowledgeable appliance specialists know how to outfit your kitchen or laundry room with the right appliances to meet your needs. We service what we sell with our own in-house factory trained service technicians. And for the DIYers, our parts department is always ready to help customers find the appliance parts they need. Patterson's Home Appliances, because we care. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports. Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. Uh, you know, better late than never is all I got to say. Yeah, leave the best for last anyway. Best for so, last. So we're here. Uh, we'll be here for about an hour probably tonight. Maybe just a little bit longer than that uh, for some phone calls. Uh, you know, we'd be more than glad to give up an hour of our show for the safety of our high school football players because we do love high school football around here. But Cox uh, Week 2 and uh, man, I really just don't know what to say about Clinton. I'm really, uh, I don't know. It's, I, I, I know what I'm, I know what I'll hear tomorrow. Well, it's a non-region game, but Clinton's defense is, Clinton's defense is still at the house. They've not. Uh, major concern. Yes, major concern for their defense. And, you know, uh, we're not talking being out, if we're outgunned, it's we're outgunned in the same division we're in. We're talking a 5A school and Clinton a 5A school and uh, uh, some major problems. So maybe the next couple of weeks they can get this thing on track. Uh, I hate to say this, but Clinton season could actually maybe be on the line in the Campbell County game. I mean, if they're going to go in postseason, that's a game, I think, if you looked on the calendar early on this year with Campbell County sort of rebuilding and Clinton got coming back what they had, they it should be a little bit different. But right now the dragon wagon, the wheels are off. I know it's early. Yeah. It's early and there's plenty of time to recover, but uh they got some uh they got some work to do. Big Absolutely. Time. I mean Cleveland plays McMinn County tonight and Cleveland only scores twenty points. And I think uh what Clinton gave up 40 points last week against them, and they gave yeah. up 30 this week in the first half. Yeah, 30 something in the first, first not first half. First, well, first, it wound up being the first half anyway, but first quarter. Yeah, I think it was 30, 31 to nothing in the in the first quarter. Not as many penalties tonight in the first part of the game as there was last week in the overall game. It was a lot of turn. I think in the first quarter or the first half was three turnovers. Wow. So turnovers are just as bad as penalties at times. So, but Clinton's got a lot of work to do. Uh, did you ever find out a final in Lawrence County? We find out. I've not got a final, and, and nobody's, you know, sending updates on Twitter from the game. Uh, what's, so, a what's a close game? Wasn't it 23? 23, 23 to, 20 when I left. 23 to 20. Uh, Anderson County had the ball about midfield, but I mean it was still in the third quarter. Uh, so maybe we can get some updates. I don't know if there's just no scoring going on there or. Do we up? Do we 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 don't have a final with Campbell County and Fulton yet? Neither do we. <coughs> uh, Campbell County won. They did win. Okay. Yes, I think it was 39-30. 39 to 30. It's the best I think is what I got. Okay. Uh. Uh, the, I think the story of the night right now is the two games that Five Stars tweeting about, and they're going, and and people are going uh, talking about. Farragut beats Powell on a last second touchdown. And the other one is the Beard Alcoa game where Alcoa beats Beard after Beard led the entire night. And then you got Loudon who beats Lenore City in overtime in a big rivalry game. So Bearden, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks has had a chance to uh, knock off two defending state yeah. champs in West and Alcoa. And uh, 
come up just a little bit short. I mean, that's a Bearden team that rolls into Anderson County next Friday night, I think. 0-2. Oh 0-2? Two. Oh two? Yep. Uh, and I'm sure they'll be uh, – that ought to be a that ought to be a pretty interesting game. So uh, maybe somebody uh, got us up. We'll see if we get who's calling us here. That was on fourth and seventeen that Powell beat. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Joni. Here. What do you say, boys? What did I miss tonight? I saw the Farragut Powell game was good. Yeah, yeah fourth and seventeen and Powell. Scores a touchdown with 14 seconds to go. Goes for two, wins 28-21. Wow. Wow. That's... Dang. Well, any other notable good games? Yeah, Elk Ridge got beat tonight. Oh, well, you must, that's weird. You must be thinking about Clinton because they got stomped. No, Oak Ridge. Yeah, again, you must be thinking about Clinton because Oak Ridge didn't play tonight. Yeah, they got beat. Oh, yeah, Clinton did get beat. <laughs> well, I didn't say Clinton. Oak Ridge. Bye beat well, him tonight. Oak Ridge is a play tonight. I'm just trying to help you, David. I'm trying to help you. I don't need no help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're no, you, no, you're right. Clinton did get stomped tonight. You're right. They sure did. <laughs> yeah, I just have, are you see, David, just listen to me. I'm trying to help you. No, I'm not going to listen to you ever, but I no, will. He uh, won't even show up to the games. He don't even show up. You don't even come to the games, man. How What's can he you even talk for? about I don't even know I, why. I went, I went to the Clinton game, and that was uh, that was interesting for sure. Hey, and, and a fair assessment, what do you see wrong with Clint? If you, what, what's what's going on with the Dragons' defense? Oh, dude, it's, they're terrible on defense. So, they're slow. They're, I hate to rag on them because I'm just calling what I see. If they have great skill position players. They're good. But their, their offensive line is terrible, and their defense is terrible. It's just as bad. Well, it's good for the good thing for them is they have a good athlete for a quarterback. But the bad thing about that is he threw three picks in the first quarter. So yep. it's they're in a weird spot. It's, so it's not like they were toss up catches. Like those were such obvious terrible picks. Even one of, there was I'm not gonna say the coach's name, but there was a coach I was sitting beside from another school, and he even looked at me and was like, that was a terrible throw. Why'd he throw that? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know much about football. But that's my honest assessment is Clinton's just – this is the same Clinton team we saw last year. Nothing has changed. You're, you're – I just don't know how else to put it. There's hey, Caller, hold on a second. Caller, hold on. You're, I know you get to talking, and let's let our viewers know what happened. Mavs were up 23-20 going in for a score. The play was called incomplete. Mavs now lose 26-23. They lost? They lose to? Science Hill. Science Hill. A team who lost to Elizabethan last week by three scores. Who, and who did they lose? Who did uh, the Mavs lose to? Science Hill. Science Hill. They're from Johnson oh, City. Wow. wow. Sci Whoa. Whoa. Wow. And I was ragging on them last week. Well, good for them. So what does that say about Harrison County? They'll be back. They'll be back? Non-region game, it's the same thing that you'll hear from Clinton. It's a non-region game. It's an, it is a non-region game against West, and I understand that. But the difference this week than last week with Clinton, it's a 5A football team. So if you think you're going to contend for 5A, you got to beat West eventually anyway. I mean... Sure, but at the end of the day, this uh, I'll just go back to what I said. This is the same team from last year that went 0-5. and five. I understand that. that. That's why I'm going to say this, and you'll understand. When I say this, I think you agree with me. Week 4 for Clinton season is on the line, week 4. That's the Campbell and County game. I agree. They have to win that. They, ha they don't have to win that game, but if they lose that game, they could be on the same path to what you're saying for the last year, this year again, where it comes down to beating Carnes. The only difference this year, Carnes is nowhere near as good as what they were last year without Bishop. But week four, it's on the table for Clinton. I mean, they, they need Campbell to win that, the Campbell County game. 
week four they need to win because right after that, and I don't know what the order is here, it's either Powell, Anderson County, and Oak Ridge. It's that combo right there. It's that combo right there. Clinton's got those three games in a row right there. So it's, uh, it's Powell first, Oak Ridge second, and AC third. Okay, so it's right there. They've got them three games in a row. So those are big games right there. I mean, if you, you lose the Campbell County game, there's a possibility you lose all three of those games. So you might win next week at Scott County. And the way Clinton's defense is playing right now, I don't know if they'll win next week at Scott County. I don't know what Scott yeah, County's done to uh, Listen, I love ragging on Clinton as much as the next guy. And I love ragging on Clinton just as much as the next Ridger. But they're going to beat Scott County. Okay, well, I'm, I say they pro I agree, but right now, who knows the way their defense is playing. I mean, no, I agree. <laughs> Miracles can happen. Who knows? Yeah, that's right. Miracles. You're right. Miracles do happen. I agree um, with you. It's just, I don't know. It's. It's a very interesting dilemma that's happening in Clinton right now. And it's weird because one of the Oak Ridge transfers got approved today, and he didn't really make that much of a difference. He was just, yeah, kind of a ghost on the field. So, so you, we'll see what happens. You, so you're saying Oak Ridge had a kid transferred to Clinton and he was eligible and played today? I thought that kid was – I was told last week that kid was ruled ineligible and was coming back to and was coming back to Oak Ridge. Well, I don't. Maybe there's a. I'd, may, rather, not, I'd rather not say it on the air. Okay, you don't have so, to. I mean, so is he eligible or ineligible? I mean, that's not talking. That, that's just facts. There's a, there's, there are several players on the Clinton roster from Oak Ridge. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't. I, okay. I, I don't have any idea. I'm not around the program. So yeah. I don't know nothing about it. So uh. there's so there's one that's a skill position player. That's a wide receiver. He he has to sit out five games because he said he basically quit last year during the middle of the season. So if he sits out another five games, that's basically a year. So whatever he he's basically going to miss the Oak Ridge game and then he's back to playing. The one that I got approved today is an offensive lineman who was our center last year and he wasn't that good. But, and, you know, they moved, for, they moved him around a lot tonight because Wentz was all over their offensive line. So, yeah, I guess uh, Clinton was kind of scrambling to figure out where they're going to put him because he didn't really do a good job. But, hey, it's West. What do I know? Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll but, see. Yeah. Like I said, it's, ar it's early. It's early. We'll see. Yeah. It's early, but, again, this is the same team from last year, and I don't see any improvement. So we'll see. See, buddy. I think Clinton to be cards. See you. All right, see. Uh, I think, you know, Clinton lost a kid that left out that moved off and that was a really big offensive player. Jesse talked about him last week. Yeah, Lyman and went a defensive, and he was a main. Then they had the kid tonight that had to set out tonight that got thrown out in the first part of the game last yep. week. So that hurts, too. But, you know, I, Clinton's got to get got to get it back on track here. Go ahead, Carter, you're on the air. Anderson County lost 26-23. 26-23, thank you. Okay, bye. Bye -bye. Young man calls us every year, has been for a while. Hey, let's jump out and take our first break, and we'll be right back here on the free medical clinic Friday night school board here in just a couple minutes. We should never lose sight of our health. To keep moving forward, let's not forget everything we've learned. Limit the salty food options. Make your own daily exercise routine. And always receive regular checkups. More than anything, we have learned how important these small steps can make a big difference. So we can all continue to move forward together. I am a simplicity dealer. This business is my life, my career. If you need a new mower, I'll help you choose the model that will make your property look its very best and even let you take a test drive. When it does need service, you can rely on my factory service training and genuine parts. Because I don't just sell products, I build relationships. I am a simplicity dealer. SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. 
As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Excited for a season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacles blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law 865 546 1111 and turn your red into a chicken. 1952. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. 
Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Welcome back to the Free Medical Clinic uh, Friday Night Scoreboard. Folks, if you don't have health insurance, you can count on Free Medical Clinic to help you with your medical needs. Just go to fmcor.org and get your first, first appointment now. There's never a charge for a doctor visit at FMC. So we appreciate uh, Free Medical Clinic being our sponsor, and they do a lot for... Uh, for the surrounding counties, for Anderson, Morgan, and Roan. So, uh, if you need uh, you need something, uh, need to see a doctor, don't hesitate. FMC, if you don't have insurance, get out and see them. They'll take care of you, and we appreciate their sponsorship. Cox Anderson County uh, falls tonight on a, and I, you know, I just seen the replay. I, I don't, I don't know if it's a catch or not. I said it was out of bounds, but zero uh, and two. So, wow. I don't think nobody up that way thought that would happen. Just don't. I went tonight. Uh, I mean, big punt, big turnover on special teams. They get the ball about the 15, 20 yard line, score a touchdown. The next play, call back illegal man downfield, illegal lineman downfield. I've seen that play on TV. Next play, interception. Uh, I would say half dozen penalties, legal procedures, just. Not very characteristic of Anderson County football right now. Uh, but they've got Bearden coming in town, and the good news after that is they're going to be playing in a 4A region that might arguably be the worst it's been. Who's in that region in a long with time. them? Um, Fulton in there? You'll have Fulton and South Dole, Scott County. Is, is, there, that just, right? is there just four teams in there? I think so. Unless it changed. I want to say, uh, is Carter maybe in there? I'm not sure. Carter. I'm not sure either. I need to look. Uh, it changes so much now. But if it hadn't changed, I think South Hill, Anderson County, Fulton, and Scott County was, and then somebody else, maybe Carter's who made up the, it, it, yeah, I, the league you, last year. You could, you could be right on that. Yeah. Uh, who would be their main competition? Uh, I watched Carter play last night against, <coughs> excuse me, against AE. I mean, can't really tell much from playing AE. No, there's. <coughs> I just don't think there's a. I don't think there is. I think the. I mean, what? Okay. Same story. I know you probably didn't watch the game last night because you never do. Austin East is brings a, a new quarterback in, and I understand this is a kid that lights it up on the basketball court. Cherry? Yeah, lit us up on the basketball <laughs> court. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's a uh, very good, talented athlete. Uh, you know, he's hard guard. He's fast. He's quick. Um, and got a bunch of D1 offers, I say. Yeah, got some Tennessee. Division one, yeah, got some Division one offers. Of course, you know, you don't know what's committable and what's not these days, but uh, well, very my, good athlete. my thing going to be that when he came in, I thought this is the guy that I've had heard Jody talk about. That's yeah. why I'm going to say what I'm saying. And, you know, Austin East was on a six-quarter. I think he hadn't scored in six quarters or five quarters. And he comes in automatically, and it's like lightning in a bottle. You know, next thing you know, they're scoring. Yep. He takes them down the field, score. And the next thing you know, they get the ball back in, and they score again. And it's 14-13 like that. Like that. I mean, it's just like that. Yeah. But then – He's he's out of gas after a few other plays, and they bring the other quarterback in, and it's like they never put him back in. I don't understand why. I mean, maybe maybe the basketball coach come out of the stands and said, enough of that, put him back as wide receiver. I don't want him in the quarterback because he was running the ball. And he did throw a pretty good long touchdown pass too, but, uh, man, that kid is, you know, I know he's good on the basketball court, but he's pretty good on the football field too, so uh, – I was trying to okay, think. so now I'm I'm just getting texts. I pulled up myself here. Looks like you have maybe Gibbs was in there last year, um, and and they and I think they're back in there this year. So you got Fulton. <laughs> it's worse than I thought it was. You have Fulton, Seymour, 
Anderson County, Carter, Gibbs, and South Dole. So it's worse than I thought it was. So who's who would we say right now would be AC's competition there? I mean, I know they're all competition. Would would it be South Door or would it be Carter? I'd say South Door's better than Carter, if okay. I was guessing right, right. now. All right, then. But I don't know if either one of them's any good. Go ahead, Carter, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on, Claire? How you doing, bud? Doing good, man. Uh, so to touch on what you talked about with that Austin East Carter game last night. Yeah. Uh, so since I'm not on the show, I didn't say it. When that other dude walked over to the bench and quit, it was like the rest of the team rallied around that, that other kid. And they found a spark. But then they came out in the second half, and, man, that spark was dead. Boy, what happened? I don't know if that other kid you said walked over to the bench and quit came back in and played. <laughs> well, I know, right? What's up with that? I don't know. So Troutman, so Troutman walks off the field. He he comes and off Cherry the field. Cherry comes out and plays. Yeah, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be just a little bit different to you, and I'm gonna say I thought the kid got hurt. Okay, that's my. He might not have. He might have done exactly like you just said. To me, I thought he got hurt, and he he did walk off the field. But I thought he got he hurt. Did. He walked over, sat down on the bench, took his helmet off, <laughs> sat down beside him, and said, you know, whatever. Yeah, right. But I, like I said, once again, I thought he got—he was injured. I—I I didn't perceive it as he had quit. But you know, he, they brought. You didn't they, see, they, the, you didn't see the, uh, the weird side arm try to throw it underhanded out of bounds play that preceded that, uh, where he got called for intentional grounding. Yep, I seen that. That's okay. a play I thought he. he that's said, a play I thought quit. he got. I'm going over here and I'm sitting down. I'm done. I th I'm done. I. Th I thought that's the play that he got hurt team. on. That was his mindset. That was the look on his face and what I saw from Okay, him. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just saying my mindset was I thought he got hurt, so I didn't think the same way you did. So I, I looked at it as that's a quitter right there. Very well could and, be. Don't know the kid, so I don't know. And, oh, I, that's one well, if he quit, he, you know, if he quit, he came back in. Yeah, that's, that's the coach's fault. That's the coach's fault. Your team comes to play, baby. You 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 throw your freshman or whatever he is out there. Oh, Jerry's not no freshman. He's a junior. He's a junior. All over the field throwing strikes like dimes. You know what I'm saying? He did. Running, breaking tackles, getting first downs when they wasn't. They hadn't moved the ball. I don't think they had a first down before that kid came in the game. Uh, you might be right on that too. I know they hadn't scored like from the last game to this game. So, but he was—he was lightning in the box. That's what I just told Cox, man. He turned it. He turned that game around and put AE ahead for just a little while, and then it's like the, it's like he was gone. He had played in the football game yeah. since eighth grade. I bet he was exhausted. Yeah, well, he was. That's why they had to take him out because he's exhausted. And the other kid came back in. Like I said, I thought the other kid got hurt on the play he's talking about. He said he thought he walked off the field, quit. I don't. If you walk off the field quick, you go to the dressing room too most times. Hey, so, anyway. I, I mean, go back and watch the replay. I, mean, I will. I'll watch it. I'll try to. I'll try to call it up. I'll try to get hey, it up. He looks like he walked off the field and quit. Okay. But I, uh, hey, I was surprised, and I ain't trying to make nobody in Auburn Springs mad at me. I was oh, yes, surprised Auburn Springs hung in there with Kingston as good as they did. I think Kingston's going to have a good football team this year. Well, I think we were a little surprised it wasn't closer. But that I mean, shows what we know. I, well, from what I saw, I mean, Kingston's got a dominant line. Oh, well, they always do. I mean, they, they control the line of scrimmage all night. They always do control it when they play Oliver Springs and Harriman and Rockwood. But and those they get teams, to Alcoa. And then they get to Alcoa. But those teams have to play Kingston if it's a home game because it's a money uh, game. And we know what it's all about. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Kingston has to play Alcoa because they're in the region. I get it. Yeah. But uh, there's no more Rockwood. <coughs> uh, speaking of which, what's up with Rockwood falling to Monterey? I, I mean, don't know. I've seen that while going. I'm really, I was shocked when I seen that. Uh, I mean, is Rockwood just down? I mean, Must be. is there a team that's down? Or 
But hey, they and must be. Out of Rockwood, they must be. I'll have to. School and other and sing away football. I'll try to call you next. I'll try to call you. I'll try to have you an answer next week on the show. I'll try to call and do some checking on that this week. But I mean, there's just how do you go from three A to single A? Attendance. Yeah, attendance. Only way. Enrollment. It's the only way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I get it, but and then start losing the way they are. I mean, it's just I was I was thinking Rockwood. Be honest with you, coming into the season, I thought, well, Rockwood's in the region with Coalfield Green by oh nine this year. You know. They're going to steamroll through there. I mean, Jim? common sense would say that because they've been used to playing, like you said, Alcoa, Kingston. Uh, they've been used to playing these 3A schools. I will say this. Don't count Rockwood out just yet. Too good oh, a coach. So what, you think they're just taking everybody to light? They're thinking, oh, we better than I, them. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I, I, I'm not saying that. Too good a coaching staff down there to let it, to let the wheels just come off of it. It's been there a lot. Coaching yeah. staff's been there for a long time, so I'm not too worried about Rockwood right now. We will probably be well, here I, in, about, in about eight weeks. We'll probably be talking about Rockwood going to the playoffs. I'm, I'm going to throw this at you. Throw it then. And... And and you can you can appreciate what I'm about to say. In in very 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 fond memory of my buddy and yours, Crazy Legs. I hope Rockwood's good. I mean, I don't want to see Rockwood drop down like it. I mean, they've got such a good fan base. You go to Rockwood, man. Them people are so good to you. I mean, and they got the best hot dogs in Brion, dude. They grill them. Hot dogs. They they do. Yeah, you're right about that. Hey, we got a bunch hey, of other calls, man. We got to get them. Uh, see, bud. See. Quick caller, you on the air? Hey guys. So uh, David Clary shot me a text and told me that Campbell County beat Fulton, and I was it kind of surprised and shocked me. So I kind of want to hear Cox's view on what happened. Uh, I don't think it shocked me at all. I thought it was closer than I expected. I know Fulton was leading that ball game 29-26 at one time, I think, 29-24 maybe. Um, but uh, I think what caught me off guard about it was is that Campbell County just lined up and ran the football down their throat in the second half. Um, and I thought, you know, with Hensley being a quarterback from Campbell County, I thought the, the pass would probably what would get Fulton. But Fulton's down in numbers. They're down in athletes. You lose a Mr. Football off your team and graduate some seniors and got new starters at all positions. It just it cycles through, man. Fulton's yeah, not. Graduation call. I, I don't know. So, uh, I do know this. In the last 39 years, Campbell County has not beat Fulton at football. I don't know about going wow. back any longer than that. Um, wow. Wow. But they've not played a ton, caller. But that's – I do know I can stand behind the 39 years. So, I see where you're well, surprised, but knowing what I know about Fulton football right now um, and knowing what the hype of, of Campbell County going into the season, I was more shocked how bad Halls beat Campbell County on the opening Thursday of the season more so than them beating uh, Fulton tonight at Campbell County. Well, both of you knowing what you know, how do you like Campbell County's matchup against Clinton? Because now you've seen both teams play twice. I was just looking at that schedule right there for Clinton, and I'll pull that back up. I'm going to take a little different stance here. I don't think Clinton – I'm a little disappointed in Clinton's program right now where it is compared to where I thought it was going to be. They're still not to the level of – you know, West and Cleveland, and Cleveland's not really been, rel you know, relevant the last couple of years, but you got Scott and Campbell County, so I think they're end up being two and two. But then you got Powell, Oak Ridge, and Anderson County, and then you're going to be two and five, possibly. And then I think what happens from there um, can be very interesting. You know, can you bounce off that Anderson County win or loss, either way, you're going to be so high or so low after that Thursday night game. Can you go to Lenore City and win a big region game? I think they're better than Carnes. Um, so, Agreed. 
you know, in their in their region, they've got to beat Campbell County and they've got to beat Lenore City and Carnes, so they're a two seed and not in one of those three four matchups going on the road early in the playoffs. They, they're going to make the playoffs this year. First right. time in a long time, they're going to make the playoffs. We can, yeah, we one one would assume that would be the the good judgment. So. I guess that didn't really answer my question, but how do you like them against Campbell County? Well, I said they're going to be two and two, so caller, that oh, means they're going to win the next two games, which one of those is Campbell County. Oh. All right, well, fair enough. Um, and to uh, counter what you said earlier, you're kind of disappointed in them. I mean, you kind of ragged on me a little bit last week about it, but I'll say it again. Unfortunately, it's, a lo it's still a losing culture over there. And... At the end of the day, you can have all this hype and all these players come in, but you've got to win games. You, you, you just That's what's boiling down to. And this is Clinton. This is it for Clinton. This is the year, no matter what, because they're losing everything this year. And I think we can all make a safe assumption. Darian Stone is not walking through those doors next year either. So hopefully they can figure something out to make this magical year happen. So good luck to you both, and uh, hope the Fulton Falcons bounce back. Yep. See you at basketball. You know, I, I'm going to be honest, he's talking about a lot of hype. Man, I live in Clinton, okay, and I've lived there all my life. I'm right there in the middle of town. I I didn't see any hype. I didn't hear any hype or see any hype on Clinton until I read a piece in the paper that had him predicted to win the region. So I don't know. I, I don't know where all the hype. I mean, they must have been talking. I didn't hear it, but I guess that's possible. Quick caller, you on the air. Yes, who won the Hammond football game? Ooh, I Our TV ticker has not showed Harriman. No, I, don't, I don't know that we've got a Harriman's. We'll get you a score in, in just a second. Uh, do you know who Harriman was playing? Who Harriman was playing? No. Are you watching us? No, I'm not. I who Harriman was playing. Hold on a second. I was watching you, but I went outside. And Okay, well, we said if we try to get it. I've not seen it on the ticker. I don't know if they played tonight or not. So they might have been off tonight. Some teams had an off night tonight. I'm not for sure. So uh, we'll see if we can find out here before you hang up on us. See him anywhere? I'll get it. Yeah, we'll, we'll. I'm looking over here, and I hadn't seen it pop up on the ticker thing. So I don't see it. I don't think I've seen it, period, tonight. I just got a text saying that. Um, Carl, I don't think Cameron played tonight. I'm wondering if they didn't. We don't think they played tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Go ahead, Carl, you on the air. Why is the Oak Ridge fan worried about Clint? Just tell me why. I have no idea. You have to ask him, man. I don't have any idea. Hey, caller, turn your TV down and turn listen to Turn your TV down and listen to us. Don't listen to us on TV because there's a delay. You there, caller? Yeah. I don't know why the Oak, I don't know why the Oak Ridge fan. I think he knows some people that's on the team, and I have no idea. Like I said, yeah, I. I can't see. Are they scared of Clinton or what? No, I don't think they're scared of Clinton. They so worried about him. Uh, I don't know why they would be. I, I don't think know I've why been they doing would. this show for about ten be. or twelve years. I don't know the last time. Uh, I don't know the last time. Well, Wait, the way Clinton the come in, it's about Clinton. What's the big deal? What's the big deal about what? Everybody called in. It's about Clinton because we lost his first two games. The season ain't over yet. Uh, yeah, I agree with you on that. I agree with you. We that. actually think they'll be two and two after their first four games. They just got to get some things worked out. They'll be fine. They better get to working on them. Yeah, but why? People think they can't beat Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge ain't won but one game. And Jefferson County didn't have nothing. So how you gonna compare that? I, I just. Oak Ridge is 1-0 and Clinton's 0-2. That's how I would compare it. 
I mean, yes, we can if it happens. You know, Wes lost a lot of football players from last year's football team that didn't matter neither. So I don't know how you compare it. I mean, that's a long way. The Oak Ridge game's a long ways down the road. So I, if I was Clinton, I wouldn't be worried about Oak Ridge. If I was Oak Ridge, I wouldn't be worried about Clinton because Clinton's got a lot more problems to worry about than Oak Ridge. Yeah, but my thing, my thing is this. Oak Ridge had a cakewalk against Jefferson County. They didn't have nothing. Okay. Ain't no comparison. Okay. You say so, man. I, I don't know. I've not seen Oak Ridge play, nor have I seen Clinton play. Yeah, but these fans of Oak Ridge think they won the state because they won the first game. Well, I, you know, I, once again, I can't answer that question. Uh, Oak Ridge is 1-0 and, and Clinton's 0-2, so... Uh, look, at, look at that schedule. I, you know, you only play... You, you have to play who's on the schedule. It don't really matter who's on the schedule. You just win who's right. on the schedule. I mean, Clinton's going to play <coughs> Scott County next next Friday night. Uh, I don't know if Scott County's won a game in the last couple of years. So, yeah. you know, you play who's on the schedule. Who's up next is Scott County for Clinton. I don't know who... I couldn't tell you who Oak Ridge plays because... I don't keep up with Oak Ridge, so I don't know. So, you know, like I said, it's, the Oak Ridge game's a long ways off. But if you want to go on history with Clinton and Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge will come in as a favor in that ball and in that game. Because Clinton well, we don't beat, because we, Oak Ridge, we can't, because... We can't live on the history in the past. Yeah, we okay. can live on the history in the past, because Oak Ridge, uh, because Clinton only beats Oak Ridge about once every 15 or 20 years. Well, everybody knows that. Yeah, that's okay. right. So that's that's history, and that's usually what happens. So we'll wait and see, and we'll play the game, and at the end of that game, you call us back and let's see what happened. Because that's the only thing I don't right. tell you to do. I don't know nothing about it. The score was 21 to 14 last year, so what's the big deal? Who won the game? Oh, Grant won the game. Okay, that's what the big deal is then. There you go. Clinton didn't win that game. And last year, Clinton was 2-0 and at this point, and everybody was feeling good. But you go back and talk about schedule, I think they'd played Austin East and William Blunt. Yeah. Which those two teams, I don't know if they won two or three games total last year. So this year, they beefed up their schedule. They're 0-2. We still think they're going to be 2-2, and and then they'll get in the heart of the schedule and play Oak Ridge, Powell, and Clinton, and we'll find out if they're going to be contenders or pretenders again. Okay, out of them three teams you just mentioned, do you think Clinton is capable of winning any one of them games or what? I think they're capable of winning, but I feel like that from everything that – I mean, I read the box scores last week, and Clinton probably looked like one of the most undisciplined football teams in the, just by the box scores and the stats and the penalties. Uh, and then this week they jump out and go down 30-something to nothing to start the first – I mean, the first half. So, I mean – do they have the possibility to win, the capability to win, the talent? Yeah, but, I mean, like David said, you better get it figured out. Okay, I got one more question. Don't quarterbacks have a bad night? Oh, yeah. Yeah, quarterback their didn't quarterback, have nothing to their do. Their quarterback's a player. Yeah, he's a player. We know he is. He didn't give but, up 35 points. But, he, th but he, he threw three interceptions tonight, though. That's Tommy. a bad night. You know you can't win when you're down 21 points. That's a, you know oh, that. yeah, you can. You can win down 21 points. Yeah, you can. No. I want Jarrett County come back and beat Fulton up to uh, fourth quarter, down twenty in a playoff game one night. Yep, <laughs> it, 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 hap it, it happens. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna hang up. All right, see, see you, man. Yeah. Wait, call you on there. Yes, uh, the Harriman lost to Wartburg, twenty-one to eighteen. Ooh. Harriman lost to Wartburg, twenty-one to eighteen. Wow. Yeah, I'll just cut on Coach T. Okay. Thanks, man. We appreciate it. Okay. Bye. All right. All right, folks, let's jump out here and take another commercial break, and we'll be right back. And when we come back, uh, if we don't have a call, I'm going to ask Cox a couple of Tennessee football questions here and get him on the record here early. So we'll be right back here in just a couple minutes. Football is back. And OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your rep into a check.
starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Beautiful yards make a statement. And beautiful yards come from Simplicity Mowers. Their exclusive free-floating mower decks with full-width rollers track the contours of your yard for a perfect cut. So visit your neighborhood Simplicity dealer today and start the conversation about your lawn. Simplicity, the way to a beautiful lawn. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of health care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Football is back, and OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense. Call OAB Law and turn your wreck into a check. Welcome back to the Friday Night Scoreboard. Uh, Cox, us, uh, we had somebody send us, ask for us to talk a little bit about Beard and Alcoa. You touched on it a little bit earlier, so. So Beard leads the entire game. Entire game. Um, Alcoa gets the ball down 13 to 10 uh, on the one yard line, goes 99 yards, uh, about a seven minute drive uh, to go up 17, 13. Um, Alcoa kicks off to Bearden, Bearden marches it down the field 
gets the ball to the one yard line with about a minute to go and fumbles. Wow. Alcoa runs a play. Uh, Bearden takes a timeout. Alcoa runs another play. Bearden calls a timeout and the lights go out. Lights went out in Alcoa. <laughs> lights go out in Alcoa. Lights went out in Campbell County tonight. Yeah, I've seen uh, that before. I like spoke to You experienced it. I've experienced uh, it. So great. lights go out. I don't know exactly how it transpired from there because we came on the air, but I did read on social media and Twitter that Alcoa ended up winning the game. It didn't say if they come out and took a knee or how that happened, but they ended up coming up and winning the game. Um, just a very exciting night of high school football. It was wild. That wind started blowing so hard at Anderson County that they had to take down all the flags and everything that was around the field that they put up. Um, and I mean, it was probably 30, 35 mile an hour winds up there. Wow. Uh, and it rained, you know. Well, it rained pretty hard on me coming down here and I had to wait just a minute before I come in. Let's get these couple calls. Quick caller, you on the air. Hey, good evening to you guys. Hey, Mr. Jonathan Johnson, my buddy, Tupac Cleaner over there. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? Hey, not much there. I was just going to kind of comment on the, the Dragons tonight there. That guy, there's two weeks in a row you, you come out of the gate and, uh, and knowing they were going to do it, Cleveland onside kicks and recovers the football, and they knew they were going to do it. And then you come out tonight there and you fumble the kickoff right off the bat and you, they score, you get the ball back and then, uh, you know, uh, throw an interception and, and you, I mean, you're not even two or three minutes into the game, you're down 14 to nothing against the defending state champions there. Uh, I think Clinton's just got too much talent, guys, so to play that way. They, they got to clean some stuff up. <laughs> we agree. It's early, though. Clinton it is. It's early in the year there. I, they, you know, they scheduled a, you know, a tough, they got, had a tough schedule there. They've still got some tough teams to go there, but we'll see where it goes from here. Hopefully they'll clean some stuff up there. And I, I wanted to say, John, I know you and David both know there that, uh, Fort High School, uh, they lost a legend over there this year. <laughs> Mr. Black? Yep. Yes, sir. He, he was a really good man. Yes, sir. Done a lot for Fulton there, but uh, we'll see where Clinton goes from here. And then, of course, Anderson County's come out of the gate a little bit slow, too. I, I expect a little bit more out of them. They got that transfer in, the quarterback from, what, Jefferson County or whatever, but We'll see how the season goes from here. And I, I appreciate you guys working the night shift for us tonight, there. And I'm interested to see, uh, David, there, what Jonathan is going to have to say about the balls because I agree with you. I've, I've got to see what this quarterback is going to do for Tennessee. I know how he come out of the gate as a starter last year, but uh, we'll see what happens this year. And I, I appreciate you guys. All right. See you, Mike. Thank you, buddy. Great caller, you on there. Hey, this is Coach Derek Vessel at Sequoia High School. Uh huh. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, doing great, buddy. Doing great here. You got a uh, call in show, and we're talking about uh, Sequoia and your success a little bit early. First time in how many games? Dude, I don't even know. It's a bunch. 46, something like that. I heard 45 or 46 games let a win, and tonight you all get a big win. Uh, is this your first year as the head coach there? Second year. Second, Second year. Yes, sir. So take us through that. You get the job. You go a year without a win. Now you get a win. Take us through that, just what it means to you and your program. And it, it means a ton. You know, the guys that were here last year, the seniors, you know, I, I talked to our team tonight, and I told them we've got to be thankful to those guys because they don't get to reap those benefits, but they did lay the foundation. And our guys, they understand that, and they understand that what it takes you know, they understand the work that it takes. It's not just to be a part of a football team just because it's cool to do. To come out and be on a team that hadn't won a game since you've been in high school, that takes guts. 
I mean, it takes guts, and our guys really showed that tonight. That's awesome. So now, Coach, t talk about a few of your kids. You know, I know Jesse at Five Star retweeted you all won, and he's he's pumping that up. Talk a little few about a, a few of your kids that played well tonight. I mean, our, our offensive line, my goodness, they're they're animals. We we roll seven or eight guys in there, and they can all play at least two positions. So if somebody looked like they were getting tired, we just move a tackle to guard, move another tackle in, or something. But our offensive line, you know, that that's. I guess that goes back to me being an old quarterback. You got to thank those offensive linemen because they paved the way. But our, you know, our whole individually, Aaron Hunt, our quarterback, he made phenomenal reads tonight. His RPO game was fantastic. We had uh, Emilio Sanchez and Theo Sperling carrying the ball for us all night. And buddy, whenever you're having to tackle Emilio, who's strong, he's five eight, 180 pounds, and then you have to tackle five nine, two twenty five. That stuff gets old after a while, and those guys absolutely killed it. Now you said RPO. Is there a lot of high schools giving that quarterback the option of, uh, of that RPO this, this day and age? There, you know, I, I think it's a lot more than people really think because, you know, you, you get your pre-snap reads and all that stuff, and that tells you right now, am I going to pull this thing essentially? And then usually you've got, I'm going to run it, but we, you know, we do the true triple option football. We're gonna, we're gonna have that, give the ball, keep the ball, throw the ball. And our quarterback tonight, he pulled it a couple times, and I was looking for the running back, and I was like, oh, dang, that's a pretty good run. And he don't even have it. And he's thrown the back door slant to somebody or a, a set down route, and the guy breaks it for 30 yards. So I mean, yeah, it, it's a lot more common now than it has been. Absolutely. Now, coach, who do y'all have next week? Signal Mountain. Signal Mountain. Well, Coach, we appreciate you calling in. Uh, proud of you. Great win down there. I'm sure everybody in uh, Sequoia is there. there uh, good, good Friday night. Hey, Coach, not only congratulations to you, but congratulations to your kids. Absolutely. That, that's who yep, That's who I was making sure that everybody understands. That's <laughs> the guys that deserve it. All right. Thank you, Coach, for calling. Thank you, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Right, yes, thanks, sir. Have man. a good night. Wow, 46 games break the losing streak. What? All right, Cox, let me ask you a question. Last year, Tennessee averaged, I think, 46 points a game. Will they average 46 this year? Whew. Um, no. All right. No, they want to be under 46. If you're asking me, it'll be under 46. And, and you got to think, last year, they scored 50 on the Bama. Yeah. You're probably lucky if you score 20 on Bama this year. Possibly. Florida, South Carolina, Texas A&M. Which would be the most disappointing loss to Tennessee's fan base, do you think? Florida, South Carolina, Texas A&M. South Carolina home. You don't think the Florida game would be a disappointment? Not, not the biggest disappointment because South Carolina got you last year. You're going to want to get them back, and that's your home SEC opener. I, know, I, I think we're used to losing in the swamp. I, we, well, that's what I was going to say. <coughs> I listened to something. Well, I'm asking, I heard yeah. these questions asked Sunday. Uh, do you think Tennessee win as many games they won last year? Nine and three. I'm thinking Tennessee maybe eight and four, nine and three. One I less. really do. I think one less. I think they'll win eight games. Yep. Okay. I think they'll win eight games. I, it's hard to maintain that success this quick. What? And somebody said, well, I mean, Nick Saban did it. Well, yeah, he, but he's probably. I don't think Tennessee's recruit. I don't think they're, I don't think they're deep enough yet. They're getting there. They're getting there. They're not, just not there yet. Yeah. So I think they've still got a little ways to go. Offensive and defensive line still aren't as deep. I think the biggest question mark, it's just a quarterback game this day and age. And last year, you put up 40-some points a game because you had – I mean, Hooker played at a high, high level. He could run it. He could throw it. He was a leader. And then you had a couple guys out there that's playing in the NFL right now catching his, you know, hot and uh, – what was the other guy's name? Uh, Tillman. Tillman. So, I know I don't think it'd be 46 this year. I do not think uh, – I do not think – that uh, I think nine games is probably a stretch. I'd say eight's more like it. But I think the biggest thing is you need to win South Carolina and Texas A&M at home on those back-to-back -back home games.
So if Tennessee winds up eight and four or nine and three, so are we saying losses to probably Georgia, Alabama, and possibly Florida? I mean, Florida, on the home. Florida, or on the road? On the road? Yeah. Yeah, that's sort of what I was thinking early on. I said nine and three early on, and I got to think, well, maybe they yeah. could. There, but the history just going to Florida sort of tells me like the history of Clinton and Oak Ridge. <laughs> Clinton just don't beat Oak Ridge yet. I mean, you go back, just go back and look for yourself. What does that happen? Maybe three times? Has Tennessee went, won three times down there in the swamp? Not one many. Recently, anyway. I'm going on recent. Casey Clawson won the 9-11 game that was scheduled at the end of the year. Yep. 2000. We got a guy that played in that game that watches our show every night, by the way. Played in the Florida-Tennessee game? Yep. Jason, well, he was Jason Witten's roommate, and he watches every Friday night now. So, it's back up tonight for high school football. If you if you were writing a newspaper article tomorrow morning that was coming out on the press, would you – what would be the story? Would it be the Bearden story? Tell would me it, what area we're covering. I'll give you a score for each one. Knoxville area. Knoxville, Anderson County. Knoxville this area, I think, I think the Knoxville area story is uh, Bearden's 0-2. Um, and Halls is 2-0. and I think that's – I think people right now are forgetting about Halls. Halls beats a team in Campbell County, uh, and then they go beat Gibbs. And that's a, that's a pretty big rivalry for uh, Halls, too, isn't it, the Gibbs yep. game? I think Farragut being 2-0 and is another story that you would write about. They win on a last-second touchdown over Powell. And I think, uh, obviously – you know, the, the beard being 0-2, losing the way they've lost their two. I mean, they've literally just... Uh, Bearden's a team, and I don't know if it was on my schedule that I'd want to see them coming. I would say if, like you're Anders, pretty... I'd say if you're Anderson County, you don't want to see Bearden coming up there 0-2 next week to AC when you're 0-2 and you know the talent that they're walking in there with. Yeah, it's a pretty good football team that's coming up there. Pretty good football team. Pretty good football team. Talented so. football team. I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, what Clinton does next week. Uh, we think they'll probably get you know, in the I think w Clinton's going to be two and two. After the first four games. After the first four games. I'll stand behind I, that. I can probably agree with that. And, and Man, they've got to clean some things up, though, defensively. They can't keep giving up 40. Can't, we just can't let keep rattling off these points like this. As we were talking in the break, it doesn't matter how good your special guys are at quarterback or wide receiver or whatever. If the quarterback don't have time to throw, I mean, it don't matter how good your wide receiver is. It really don't. Unless you're running a bubble every play. Yeah. And it don't really matter how good a running back you got if your offensive line don't block. And defensively, if your defensive front's not really, you know, you can't depend on high school DBs to make all the tackles. That, that front, whatever you're running, yeah. that front five, six, seven guys has got to be involved in a bunch of plays. It's no different than uh, – then if you're looking at Tennessee when their defensive backs start making uh, – Absolutely. Wears on you. Who's the game of the week next week, Brad? Mid <coughs> Rockwood and Midway Rockwood is the Midway. game of the week next week. Uh, and I, and that somebody called in earlier and said Rockwood went from 3A to 1A. They went from 2A to 1A. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't a two classification jump like the caller said. It was just a, a one. Um, but – I don't think you have to panic just yet if you're Clinton. Um, I, I like to see them getting two and two, and then you like to see them make that run of Powell, Anderson, and Oak Ridge. I think Oak Ridge is better than they were last year, but I also think Powell and Anderson County aren't quite as good either. So it would be interesting to see how that shakes out. Uh, Farragut wasn't a team that everybody was talking about going into this year, and they beat DB and Powell. So, we don't know what happened to the D.B. Greenville game tonight, do yeah, we? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, Coach Spradlin, what happened was they go up 7 nothing. There's a lightning delay. They sent them back out on the field. I, I wish I had my phone over with me. He said they sent them back on the field. They get warmed up. They're starting in about three minutes on the clock, was what was left on the clock of the finish and the warm-up, and another lightning strike. Well, they set up there, they set up there, they set up there. And about an hour and 20 minutes after that, they said, hey, you know, there's just – it doesn't look like it's going to break. We're not going to get this football game in. They were up 7 nothing to get in the first quarter against DB. They canceled the game, and it will not be rescheduled. 
because it's a game it really don't mean anything to Greenboro. Or somebody laid a, somebody probably made a lot of money at that gate or lost a lot of money because nobody you know of yeah. the weather that didn't show up didn't yet. show up either one so yeah that is a big money gate for yeah, both those it teams. is and was that at greenville or was that db i don't know i'd have to go back and look um uh, i'm not sure sounds like we have a warning So uh, we got a little late start tonight because uh, of all the weather. Nothing we can do about it here. Uh, you know, next Friday night, hopefully we'll be kick it. We'll kick it off at ten. Also next Friday night, we will talk. We will uh, take it uh, for the last half of the show for uh, for Tennessee football. Uh, what happened to Nayland tonight? I don't know. Nayland didn't call in. Nayland. He didn't call in. I guess after Kenny got beat again, he didn't want to call. I guess. He was working that sideline tonight. Oh, I'm sure he was, man. He's he big, called he's, me out. He's a big AC fan, man. He's a huge AC fan. So uh, he came in there and said, "Why are we lose?" And I said, "The other team's got more points, and they block, and they blocking <laughs> you, and you're not blocking them right now." So once again, <coughs> we appreciate Free Medical Clinic uh, being the sponsor of the show. And as I said earlier, if you don't have health insurance, you can count on Free Medical Clinic to help you. Uh, give them a call. Go to fmcor.org and get your first appointment now. There's never a charge for doctor visit, and they'll they'll hook you up. Uh, like I said, Anderson, Morgan, and Rome counties, and uh, just uh, if you need some help, that's the place to go. Don't go without seeing a doctor and putting things off. So, uh, Cox County, last words? We're gonna get out of here. I don't. I think if you're Anderson County and Clinton fans, you know, hang in there and let's see what happens over the next three, four weeks. Anytime, and a guy asked me now I was leaving, what's going on there's Kane's offense? Well. You know, this kid showed up at Anderson County in probably, what, right after the dead period? Probably. So, you know, he's probably, what, what five, six weeks? Well, look, just look what Anderson County lost. Yeah. I mean, come on. Anderson yeah, County's so, replacing a lot of talent up yeah. there. Receivers, running packs, and def I played on defense, too. So, yeah. uh, you know, you don't panic, you know, it's, you don't panic, brother. Non-region games, you want to win them. I mean, there's, you know, I'm sure they got some things they need to work on. Just like Clinton's got some things they need to work on, and I guess Rockwood's got some things they need to work on. But I will check on Rockwood. Hey, we'll be right back here next Friday night on the uh, Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. Everybody have a, uh, and it's a big weekend next weekend, so get ready. Football time really be here. The balls will be, they'll be getting ready to go. So uh, I was right. there's some college games tomorrow, I believe, isn't there? Let's take this last call, and we will be out of here. Quick caller, you on the air. Yes, sir. Uh, I was watching your game of the week tonight, uh, Keith and Oliver Springs. Uh-huh. The uh, uh, one, Kingston, hey, I think there is some, uh, what is it, Coach Panky over there? I think they've got a, it's going to be an exciting year for them. I tell you what, though, hats off to them, Oliver Springs boys that, I mean, them guys, they put in a lot of heart and soul in that game tonight, or at least that's my thoughts. Yeah, Kingston, you know, got a pretty good-sized offensive line, a little bit bigger school than what Oliver Springs is, and Oliver Springs always battles. You, one thing about Oliver Springs, what I've learned over the years, they don't quit. They play, and, uh, you know, this got outmanned a little bit tonight. Yeah, yeah I think it was. Uh, uh, what, what is uh, Kingston's, what are they, double-A? 3-A. 3-A. 3A? Yeah. Uh, and then what's uh, Oliver Springs single? Yeah. Got 1A. Oh, okay. But uh, actually, that was, uh, I mean, it wasn't no game really to get excited over, but I see a lot of potential on both for Kingston and Oliver Springs. Oh, yeah. It'd be a good one it'd be, it'd be for them. All right. That's it. We're out of here. We'll see you next Friday night here on the Free Market Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. Football is back. And OEB Law is excited for a season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And the
those nail biting near misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacles blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865-546-1111, and turn your red into a chicken. We should never lose sight of our health. To keep moving forward, let's not forget everything we've learned. Limit the salty food options. Make your own daily exercise routine and always receive regular exciting appliance incentives to offer your family. Buy appliances and get rewarded. It's as simple as that. Learn more about how much you can save at ORUD.org. You can save over $1,000 on your annual utility bills when you make the switch to natural gas for heating, cooking, and clothes drying. Natural gas is affordable, reliable, and safe. We are proud to offer our customers a product that saves money, provides consistent service, and is a clean energy source. ORUD is your one-stop shop. We sell and install gas appliances for our customers and make it easy to add to your bill with our 0% interest financing. ORUD is your affordable energy choice to make the game-winning play by switching to natural gas this football season. South Pittsburgh Pirates. Ric Flair used to say that to be the man, you've got to beat the man. And that's what Oliver Springs is working toward. But they get a break in week two, though, right? Wrong. The Class 3A Kingston Yellow Jackets are in town, coming off a 56 to nothing pounding of Harriman. Region 2 single A is tough enough. And seven games with that distinction have to be played. The remaining three are teams others may be scared to play. But you know, in 1989, the late Tom Petty released a ditty called won't back down, and the Bobcats certainly won't. It's Kingston at Oliver Springs for week two of your OEB Law Game of the Week. Day or night, 24-7, someone will be there to answer and give you a free consultation and get to work on your case immediately. Call 865-546-1111 or visit the website full of helpful information, reckontoacheck.com. That's O-E-B Law. Welcome into the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. I'm Aaron Harvey, joined by Coach Dan Shoemaker. We saw a 5A and 4A school do battle last week. This week, we have an A and 3A team. You commented on the schedule last week, but we give the viewers quite the variety, don't we? We always want to see good games, and I feel that this one is another good matchup to broadcast. Last week was, as you said, was 4A, 5A, but no matter the classification, there's always good football at all levels here in East Tennessee, and I expect this one to be a dandy. You got that right. We'll preview this game in a moment, as well as take you around the area and let you know what else is going on, but first we'd like to say thank you to Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties for sponsoring our pregame once again this season. Elaine grew up in the area and now serves most of East Tennessee as a trusted realtor. She did just under $10 million in sales just last year. So why wouldn't you trust her with your sell or purchase today? Give her a call or a text at 423-619-6748. 423-619-6748. This is the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show on the OEB Law Game of the Week.
season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail-biting your misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacle blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865-546-1111 and turn your wreck into a chip. Football is back. And OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits. And those... incentives to offer your family. Buy appliances and get rewarded. It's as simple as that. Learn more about how much you can save at ORUD.org. You can save over $1,000 on your annual utility bills when you make the switch to natural gas for heating, cooking, and clothes drying. Natural gas is affordable, reliable, and safe. We are proud to offer our customers a product that saves money, provides consistent service, and is a clean energy source. ORUD is your one-stop shop. We sell and install gas appliances for our customers and make it easy to add to your bill with our 0% interest financing. ORUD is your affordable energy choice, so make the game-winning play by switching to natural gas this football season. South Pittsburgh Pirates. Ric Flair used to say that to be the man, you've got to beat the man. And that's what Oliver Springs is working toward. But they get a break in week two, though, right? Wrong. The Class 3A Kingston Yellow Jackets are in town, coming off a 56 to nothing pounding of Harriman. Region 2 single A is tough enough, and seven games with that distinction have to be played. The remaining three are teams others may be scared to play. But you know, in 1989, the late Tom Petty released a ditty called Won't Back Down, and the Bobcats certainly won't. It's Kingston at Oliver Springs for week two of your OEB Law Game of the Week. Day or night, 24-7, someone will be there to answer and give you a free consultation and get to work on your case immediately. Call 865-546-1111 or visit the website full of helpful information, reckontoacheck.com. That's O-E-B Law. Welcome into the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. I'm Aaron Harvey, joined by Coach Dan Shoemaker. We saw a 5A and 4A school do battle last week. This week, we... A and 3A team. You commented on the schedule last week, but we give the viewers quite the variety, don't we? We always want to see good games, and I feel that this one is another good matchup to broadcast. Last week was, as you said, was 4A, 5A, but no matter the classification, there's always good football at all levels here in East Tennessee, and I expect this one to be a dandy. You got that right. We'll preview this game in a moment, as well as take you around the area and let you know what else is going on, but first we'd like to say thank you to Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Property for sponsoring our pregame once again this season. Elaine grew up in the area and now serves most of East Tennessee as a trusted realtor. She did just under $10 million in sales just last year. So why wouldn't you trust her with your sale or purchase today? Give her a call or a text at 423-619-6748. 423-619-6748. This is the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show on the OEB Law Game of the Week.
a season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacle blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865-546-1111, and turn your red into a check. Football is back, and OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your red into a check. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Pick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Danny Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. When should you get tested for COVID-19? You have symptoms of COVID-19, such as runny nose, congestion, sore throat, fever, cough, shortness of breath, muscle pain, headache, chills, or loss of taste or smell. Current testing recommendations say everyone should get tested immediately if they have symptoms of COVID-19. If you have symptoms, be sure to follow recommendations about how long to stay home and away from others. For more information, visit our If You Are Sick or Test Positive webpage. And welcome back into your Lane Wald of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Want to sell your home? Want to buy a home? Oh boy, have I got news for you. Give Elaine Walden a call. She's a six and a half year real estate vet and a multi-million dollar producer serving Anderson, Blunt, Cumberland, Loudon, Knox, McMinn, Monroe, Morgan, Roan, and Scott Counties and more. You can text her, you can call her, you can email her, whatever is best for you. Uh, uh, the number is 423-619-6748, 423-619-6748. And that email is Elaine Walden 15 at gmail.com. That's Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties. I'm Aaron Harvey, joined by my new colleague, Coach Dr. Dan Shoemaker. You know there's a matchup in week two that always brings a lot of excitement, and that's the Battle of the Bridge. Lenore City and Loudon have played annually since 1923, really only taking a break for a little skirmish we affectionately refer to as, you know, World War II. Loudon owns the all-time series lead 53-42-1, and, and the Redskins have claimed the last four meetings and five of the last six. Let's put a disclaimer on that, though. The Panthers have amassed 10 wins the last four seasons. Not 10 on average, 10 total. To be fair, it's 11 if you count a COVID forfeit in 2020. Meanwhile, last season was the first in that span that the Redskins failed to reach at least 10 wins, going 7-5. and five. You know better than most, Dr. Dan, that most talent in high school and at the high school level is often cyclical, and Lenore City had hit a bad spell, but the tides may be a-changing. The school added four wins a season ago under first-year head coach Gary Duggar, including an impressive showing to cap the year, a 28-21 loss to Powell. Mike Zeller is the new first-year head coach for LC, and things may be looking up as he brings his squad into this one following a 24-21 win against South Doyle. If I'm a betting man, I'm thinking this one, which normally draws a crowd of around 4,000, will be the best the series has seen in a few years. Well, before I get into the Battle of the Bridge, Aaron, I, I do want to do a shout-out to wish my mother 
Uh, happy birthday, my dear mother, Joe Shoemaker in Chattanooga. Happy 82nd birthday, Mom. Love you greatly. And uh, let, me, let me jump in there, not to interrupt you or anything, yeah. but uh, Miss Shoemaker, you did a wonderful job raising your son, and he's, <laughs> he's doing a great job here on, on television, and we're trying to take care of him, but we're learning a lot from him. Well, thank you so much. The way I see the Battle of the Bridge is really is a toss-up this year. If I were laying odds, I would uh, go even. Uh, the brain, this game always brings a lot of emotion, and you'll have a lot of fans from uh, each side turning out. And I believe that the, both programs are going to come into this game with a lot of confidence because they're both coming off uh, wins. Uh, both of these teams run the ball fairly well. Uh, so I think the team that best handles the pressure and the adversity and the heat tonight will be the one that comes out the winner. Lenore City is looking for a big signature win for a new head coach, and this one might be it. The intangibles tonight are going to be big. Now, just to throw you off just a second, because I want your football opinion, you've got Lenore City. They've not really been there, but Loudon has. You said who's going to handle the adversity, and that's probably going to be who gets the win. How difficult is that for Lenore City to get that monkey off of its back when it's not you? to being there. Hey, you're exactly right. Uh, Lou Holtz said it best. Teams have to learn how to compete before they learn how to win. And you hope that the team, uh, Lenore City team last year with four wins under their belt got some of that experience. They, they got a win obviously last week, so maybe they're learning how to compete and how to win. And this might be the night for them. Well, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that score tonight as it goes on. Let's talk about the two teams we saw live last week. Powell secured an impressive 35-21 home win against Anderson County to begin its season. Now Matt Lowe's Panther team gets a little bit of a break. Not. It's a trip to Farragut tonight to take on the 6A Admirals. Anderson County, on the other hand, well, they're going to have an easy week this week. Not. Did you fall for that? I yep. it, oh, okay. So, uh, anyway, AC has Class 6A Science Hill in the bullpen. Ain't no rest for the wicked. What are your thoughts on these respective matchups? Well, I, I think that the Powell-Farragut matchup favors Powell just a little bit because of the strong run game that they've got. Uh, they've got a great offensive line in front of them. They've got a, a really good back we saw last week with Wheeler. Uh, and I think they are going to control the line of scrimmage and they'll control the clock and they will score enough to win. Farragut has a new quarterback and he's going to have to handle that Powell defensive pressure from both of those defensive ends. So I, 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 I tend to think Powell has the advantage here by just a little bit. I think the Anderson County will rebound with a win this week over 6A Science Hill. It's a, it's a long stretch for them because, you know, going 4A to 6A is a big jump. Uh, Science Hill played a strong Elizabethan team, and while they moved the ball really well against Elizabethan, they struggled getting points, and, and that's what this game's about. you got to put the ball in the end zone. Anderson County can do that, and I think Anderson C County will be ready to take a win and a close one this week. Uh. As the the little Bobcats, the future cats, I think is what they call them, are getting recognized in the end zone here. That's really neat. Yeah, it, it's odd. I think you just saw that on your screen. Oh, my weather app says it's 87, but feels like 96. So that's the wet bulb reading. So it's 81 right now. Oh, that's cool and calm. <laughs> it, okay, so it just now turned on. It's going up. So yeah, that wet bulb is that wet bulb is going to go up even more than that. Uh, as you know, we delayed the game to kick off 30 minutes, try to get rid of the uh, the heat a little bit. And it'll help a little bit, but we'll see. Anyway, two teams that took it on the chin last week will seek retribution tonight as Harriman travels to John R. Dillon Field to take on Wartburg. The reason why I point this game out is because it's usually a stinker. In fact, you have to go back to 2009 to find a game that was within a single touchdown. For whatever reason, that's just what happens with this matchup. If you bypass that 2009 game. You'd have to go to 2,000 to find a game within one score. That's 22 games. 15 wins for Harriman, 7 for Wartburg, only two games decided by a touchdown or less. Yikes. Many people thought that that would change last year after Wartburg opened up the season with a close loss to Coalfield, but Travis Tapps Devils ended up with the blowout win, 47 to 12. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this one, regardless of who wins, is going to be a fight and should be pretty entertaining for all in attendance. Am I wrong? No, I think you're on the right track there, Aaron. While this one has been one-sided for probably the last 20 years, both of these teams are looking for a little redemption tonight. With the dogs at home, I see them with a slight edge. 
they played close for a half last week with Coalfield. This week, I think they find some answers and chalk up the win, but you can never count out a Travis Tapp Harriman team. Yeah, going back to that, I think you were you were head coach of Warburg in 2009, weren't you? Yes, yes so, I was. So uh, you got to see like one of the only close games this millennium between Warburg and Harriman. Well, I say see, you were doing more than seeing it. Yeah, if, we, if we'd had three more minutes, we'd have won that thing. But, you know, we were roaring back at the end. But yeah. Ran out of time. So we've got these, again, these, these kids are getting introduced out on the field, and I just love that. There's some other stuff going on around the area that we will make you up to date on. But first, we're going to take a break. This is the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show on the OAB Law Game of the Week. That's the year Hammers opened in the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies' boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians, or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health. For every moment. Patterson's Appliances has been helping families like yours find quality home appliances from trusted brands including Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid for over 55 years. Our knowledgeable appliance specialists know how to outfit your kitchen or laundry room with the right appliances to meet your needs. We service what we sell with our own in-house factory trained service technicians. And for the DIYers, our parts department is always ready to help customers find the appliance parts they need. Patterson's Home Appliances. Because we care. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of health care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. Really? Again? Hey, if I had automotive style suspension like the new Simplicity, plus a free floating mower deck for the best cut, I'd be all that too. Well, and if I had the expertise and advice of his Simplicity dealer, maybe he'd look forward to hanging out with me. You don't have a Simplicity dealership. Good point. Huh. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. And welcome back to the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Elaine will sell your house for you. Elaine will get you into the house of your dreams. She did just under $10 million in total sales last year, and she's standing by ready to help you with your real estate needs. Give her a call or text, 423-619-6748, 423-619-6748. That's Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties. And we are back at DJ Britton Field at Oliver Springs High School. I'm Aaron Harvey sitting alongside Coach Dan Shoemaker. Tonight, and look at that line of people trying to get into this game, uh, which was moved back 30 minutes because of the heat, which, by the way, we just got a look at a wet bulb reading, and it's reading like 88 right now. But the sun has gone down, so that's helping us, and so we hope that it continues to cool down just a little bit. So 
Tonight, for just the third time in history, Alcoa will take on Bearden. The two teams met all the way back in 1960 and 1961. Alcoa got the shutout both times, 12 to nothing and 19 to nothing respectively, which means Bearden has never scored on Alcoa. Tonight, the Bulldogs come into this matchup with one loss after West pulled off a score in the final seconds of their game last week. All Alcoa did in week one was, you know, go on the road to Ravenwood and come away with a 35-14 victory. Bearden's defense is vaunted, and Alcoa is Alcoa. What do you expect here? Well, Bearden lost a heartbreaker Friday after missing some opportunities to, to put West away. You know, and you've got to finish good teams. Uh, if you let good teams hang around, it's eventually going to cost you. And it did for Bearden last week. Now, Alcoa is just not any good team. They're the cream of the crop. And the best, and one of the best in the state. I won't say the best yet because we've not seen uh, the state championship games, but they'll be there. Uh, their defense is always strong, but they have an exceptional secondary this year. So I think Bearden is going to try to have to establish the run early. But I don't think they've got enough speed to keep up with the tornadoes and that too high form up that they do. So I, I'm, I'm thinking the, the Alcoa tornadoes. And it's amazing that a school that is big enough, they could compete in Class 2A, but when they reclassed, they went from, I think it was from 5A to 6A, Alcoa requested to move up to 3A. So they're already playing a classification up, but during the season they do this, they play 6A teams anyway. They don't care. No, they don't care, and uh, that's just kind of the tradition there. Uh, I made my first trip to... Uh, Alcoa is an assistant coach in 1993. I've seen it up close and personal, and uh, man, it, it's, that's that's the next level. That's that's where you want to be. A game tonight that we're used to seeing in Week 11 sees Coalfield head up to Scott County to take on rival Oneida. Two traditionally great programs with a lot of pride on the line. Coalfield, of course, defeated Wartburg last week with a big second half, and Oneida bested former region foe Rockwood. Oneida has the overall series lead 50 to 28, but Coalfield has won five of the last six, excluding a COVID victory. Should be a lot of fun tonight. I think so. Coach Napier knows what this game means for him and his team. Uh, Oneida does some things really well on offense. Uh, they can cause you a lot of problems. The quarterback is solid. He's going to throw the ball well. They've got a couple of good receivers who will run routes and catch balls. If Cofield can get Oneida off schedule uh, offensively, then they become a little more predictable, and I think they've got a good, good shot there. I expect to see man-to-man -man in the secondary in the back end for the Jackets, and there'll be some big plays either way. You know, those 50-50 balls can go either way, so it's, you know, it's either feast or famine that way. I see this one as a top-up, toss-up, uh, but Oneida is at home, so that always helps. And I do believe that game actually did kick off at 7.30, so I believe that one we're already a little bit into, and we'll try to get you a score on that in just a moment. Tell you what, we, according to the clock, we are under eight minutes until kickoff here, so we've got a game to preview, and we will do that next on your Elaine Walden v. Tennessee Properties pregame show. Summer's not over yet. At Rayvarner Ford in Clinton, we offer a wide selection of vehicles to help you reel in every last drop of the season. 2023 Ford Escape, Panoramic Roof, 34740. 2023 Ford Explorer, XLT four-wheel drive, 46915. A 2023 F-150 Super Cab 4x4, 46938. Local you trust, summertime fun you can't afford. Rayvarner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. Energize your home with natural gas from ORUD, your affordable energy choice. See all the ways natural gas can improve your home by visiting one of the ORUD showrooms in Oak Ridge or Kingston. New gas appliances run more efficiently. They provide hot water when you need it, precise heat control for cooking, and can dry clothes in about half the time. Comfort you can feel. Savings you can use. ORUD Natural Gas.
for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your wreck into a chicken. Welcome back to the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Elaine serves Anderson, Blunt, Cumberland, Loudon, Knox, McMinn, Monroe, Morgan, Roan, and Scott Counties, and more across the area. She'll take care of you, too. If you just get in touch with her, call or text her, 423-619-6748. That's 423-619-6748 for Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties. I'm Aaron Harvey, joined by Coach Dan Shoemaker. You get a good look at Stu's section there, the decked out in some Hawaii gear which I think is appropriate, considering uh, some of the stuff that has unfortunately gone on in, in Hawaii with the wildfires and everything. So, celebrating that tonight. What's, what's with these, these uh, student section themes that just seem like they started taking off three or four years ago? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, they get together and, and work this thing out beforehand. All right, we will join our national anthem in just a moment, and it will be performed by the Oliver Springs High School Marching Band. National anthem performed by the Auburn Springs High School Marching Band, and that means that it is official. Football is about to begin here. You know, Kingston narrowly missed the playoffs last season for the first time since 2016. Head coach Brian Pankey took over the program in 2013. In his first season, the Yellow Jackets went 0-10. Two years later, Kingston was 8-3. Since then, the Orange and Blue have only missed the playoffs twice, and last season began so promising. With just four games remaining on the schedule, this team had a 5-1 record. But then there was a close loss to McMinn Central and Signal Mountain that began a losing streak of four straight games. New year, new region, though, and a fresh start has been available to wash away the bad taste that the end of 2022 left. Game one was a success. It was a 56-0 victory over in-county rival Harriman. Game two is now on deck. Coach Pankey's teams are typically hard-nosed on defense and old school on offense. Kingston's got some pretty good pieces to work with. Yeah, it was good to see Kingston jump into the back from region three back into Region 2, where they've traditionally been for, for my career. Uh, be, being back up in Region 2, I think, will be good for them. This Kingston team is straightforward. They're not flashy. They run a shotgun wing tee. They're not going to spread it and throw it, you know, 40 times a game. Uh, they're going to run a 4-3 that's pretty solid up front. I expect them to uh, not to stun a lot and just play solid defense. Flip the page to Oliver Springs. Tyler Harper took over this program after, ha after having success at the middle school program and aiding then-coach Larry Green on the high school sidelines. He brings a mindset of toughness and fearlessness, and his team rallied around that last season, starting out losing the first three games of his head coaching career by a combined score of 121-22. to But then, in week four, on the road for the fourth straight week, the Bobcats gave Oneida everything they wanted before falling short 13-10. to That was the turning point. The team finished second in the region to Coalfield, got two wins in the playoffs before falling again to Coalfield in the quarterfinals. Now 
Auburn team wants more, and the toughness building has only just begun. In week one, Auburn Springs got on a bus and went down south to South Pittsburgh, who could be considered as, as the Alcoa or Maribel of Class 1A. Sure, the final score is 56 to nothing, but Coach Harper believes it's important to play up in order to survive in this tough region, which brings us tonight with Kingston, the AAA school in town. Auburn Springs may lose, but they'll do it fighting until the end. Yeah, I, I said that, I always said that the team will take on the personality of their head coach. And I remember Coach Harper as a player. He was always big, always physical, had a good motor, and uh, always played hard. And I see the Oliver Springs team taking that, and they're going to fight till the end of this thing, whatever the, the outcome is going to be. Uh, it's an early test, but it'll make them better prepared for the region, for the region run. All right, we are proud to uh, bring our new segment, Dr. Dan's Do's and Don'ts. So what do we have for this game? For Oliver Springs, the do's for Oliver Springs, be fearless. Don't let last week's game beat you this week. Take those lessons, move forward. Find that offensive identity. Uh, Oz, Oliver Springs will run a power game. They'll run shotgun. They'll run some short yardage. Find out what works. And then third, win on first down. Second and third down calls are easier when you're plus five on first down. All right. Dues for Kingston. I think Kingston needs to use depth and sub early. Uh, greater depth is an advantage. Play your game. Find out what you do and do what you do on both sides of the ball and minimize those mental mistakes. Focus in this heat. The don'ts for Oliver Springs is don't run out of gas. Manage the heat, work on depth, and don't give up those big plays. Tackle them, make them go the long way home. And the don'ts for Kingston, don't overlook Oliver Springs. They're going to play you tough, and don't get off track. And that is Dr. Dan's do's and don'ts, and we are just about ready for our Davis Funeral Homes kickoff. Davis Funeral Homes with two locations to serve you in Wartburg and in Harriman. Also, you can find out more information on the website, davisfuneralhomes.com, as we get set to kick off this OEB Law Game of the Week. It is Conan Littlefield set to kick deep for Kingston. I mentioned earlier, seven kickoffs last week. Six of them went for touchbacks. This kid's got a big leg, and we will see a touchback as that one squibs out of the back of the end zone, and Oliver Springs will take over with a hammers first and 10 at the Bobcat 20-yard yeah, line. That, that's such an advantage if you can do that. We saw last week how big an advantage was between the touchback versus the return. And so, you know, Coach Panky's squad gets to start. His defense starts on the 20-yard line. 80 yards to, to, for a touchdown. So for Oliver Springs, at quarterback, it will be the sophomore, Liam Bokey. Two back set. Bokey. Hand off. And looking for running room up to about the four-yard line now for Oliver Springs. About, about four yards, looks like. Not a bad call right there. Nope. And that was Dakota Adkins. One of the, I guess, only three seniors on this Oliver Springs team. Yeah, the, uh, the, there's a lot of youth there. Uh, and they're going to get better as the season goes on. Uh, they're huddling this week. We didn't see huddles last week. So here's Bokey. Shotgun formation. Handoff goes to Mason sweet, Day. Sweet. Day running from right to left is tackled at about the 26, 27. Actually, looks like they're going to give him the 29. There is a flag on the play, though. Holding. And, and it's a hold on Oliver Springs. So the Bobcats, after getting a pretty good pickup on first down, are going to have to play behind the sticks. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's you know, somebody's on the edge fighting real hard to cut that corner off and just ended up grabbing a little bit there. Um, now, it does take Oliver Springs off schedule now. So now they're second and, what, 17? Let's see. The ball is on the, looks like, 14-yard line. So, second 16. 16. 16. Now, split backs again. It's Adkins and Day. Day gets the hand handoff. And not much going to be there. Yeah, they, they, they had that one just, uh, jammed up inside pretty well. Two back, you, you, you want the fullback to insert right here, get a block. Give 
and three, as we see on the Chuck Fleischman replay. Brings up third and 13. Might see Boki throw for the first time tonight. Trips down here at the bottom. Trips at the bottom and Day in the backfield. Boki takes the shotgun snap, drops back, three step drop, and the man is there. And at the last moment, that ball is knocked away. What a great play by Tayshawn Hamilton. Yes, Tayshawn is one of those young sophomores on this uh, Kingston team that Coach Panky had mentioned when I spoke to him earlier this week. I thought that was a, a catch. Yeah, it, it was. A, it was greatly placed up the seam, and just Hamilton had to come up from behind and knock that one away. So now we're going to have Adkins in punt formation, two back deep to receive for this Kingston team. Hamilton is one of those. Adkins gets a line drive off, and it goes over. The intended target's head and picks it up on a run, moving forward, still on his feet, bouncing off tacklers before finally being run out of bounds. And for uh, Kingston, that's Ryland Gettner. About the 46, looks like, 46. And there is a flag at the Bobcat 45-yard line. I don't know, when that ball bounced really high, I don't know if Gettner touched it. Now, the official threw his bean bag, so I think he was marking the spot, so I think it was a touch. So, Gettner had to go back and he get that He had thing. to get that one. But then, as an added bonus, he picked it up and picked up some yardage. Pretty good return, considering. So, the officials will talk about this. Kingston. Ooh. Yeah, and you get those when, when, when the ball is moving from one side of the field to the other and things get a little confused in there. Sometimes that happens. Uh, you know, that's that's a that's a new rule. It's a safety rule, and I like it. I like it. You can go in and shield the guy. You just can't come in and hit him. So Kingston will take over with the hammers first and 10. Looks like the ball spotted at the 32-yard line. And we might have... Another stop at your play, maybe? Oh, yeah. We've got to get that official in the right spot. Gatner lines up at quarterback. Kane Ladd in the backfield with him, and it is Ladd getting uh -oh, the carry uh -oh. from left to right. And Ladd with a lot of running room. Only one man to beat, and what a tackle. But there's a flag comes out. That might be a face mask. It was only William Eddings for Oliver Springs. Yeah, they creased that one right there at the edge, the wing back tight end edge. And uh, he, he pops that one right there. And here he goes. Kane Ladd. Yeah, that is going to be a face mask. You can see it on the Chuck Fleischman replay. And Eddings uh, saved the touchdown. Uh, you don't want to see you don't want to see the face mask, but uh, you know you'd rather not see that but you want to see the touchdown you don't want to see a touchdown so well you're trying to grab him anywhere you could I guess. yeah you know as well as i do grabbing the face mask a very dangerous play and absolutely it's gamesmanship if you grab you shouldn't do it it's 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 bad i don't eddings though i think you're right he was just grabbing for whatever he could get there he was trying to save a touchdown and he did and he did so a hammers first and 10 for kingston ball spotted at about the 27 yard line Hand off again, and this goes to Ladd, and Ladd is dropped at the 25, a pickup of about three. About three right there. It was the same play coming this side this time. Oliver Springs was ready and played it a little better. And Ladd kind of got off to a bad start. I don't know if he just tripped over the turf monster or... And actually... I said they gave him three. Looks like they gave him a long one. I was going to say, yeah, that, I thought he got a little more than that. But. All right, so oh, here's a handoff. Back again. Yeah, this one goes to Hayden Hurley. First down. Oh, that's right. That's Carcel Whitehead. Sorry about that. The officials are taking their time. Just looking at the bad angle here, guys. I could have swore that was a first down. 
Third and short. Third and very short. Two backs in the backfield. Split backs and handoff. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. And, oh, this is going to be a touchdown. Kingston on the handoff. That was Tayshawn Hamilton with his first handoff. Yeah, that was a really nice play. Two backs. You get a little power look right there. Um, and it ended up being more than just a short yardage play. Yeah, it took that about 18 yards for the score. And now Connell Littlefield will step in to attempt the extra point. He was perfect from extra points last week against Harriman. This kick is up, and it hit my vehicle in the parking lot, probably. So Kingston strikes first. The Yellow Jackets go up 7 to nothing with 9.09 left to go in the first quarter of your OEB Law Game of the Week. Football is back. And OEB Law is excited for a season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail-biting your misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacle blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865-546-1111, and turn your red into a chicken. And welcome back to the OEB Law Game of the Week. I'm Aaron Harvey, joined by Coach Dan Shoemaker. The sun has gotten behind the ridge, Aaron, and I'm happy for that because it's cooled off probably 20 degrees in yeah. the press box. Yeah, according to my weather app, it still feels like 90-something. But here is Littlefield with the Davis Funeral Home kickoff. He's kicking it deep right now to Jaquan Benton. But it doesn't matter. Benton's not going to be able to return that yeah. one. Eight yards deep in the end zone. And so Oliver Springs again will take over at the Bobcat 20-yard line. Football is back. On the first series, Oliver Springs started off really well. Pen penalty put them behind the sticks a little bit. Let's see what they come out with on the second series. I think you keep doing what you were doing. Uh, no, no time to really abandon ship yet and go to something else. So Liam Bokey lines up in the backfield shotgun with Day beside him. Bokey back to pass. He's going to lob this one up. He's got a man there, and that pass is complete all the way up to the 45-yard line. Nice throw and catch. And that is Benton. Jaquan Benton right there. He, he, he's a taller receiver. Watch him go up right here. Makes the play. Knows the safety. He's getting ready to close as he catches it. Catches it anyway. Nice, nice throw and catch right there. Well, that's a nice weapon for Oliver Springs to have out there, wide receiver. So again, Bokey lines up, two wide receivers on either side, day in the backfield. On this hammer's first and ten, takes a snap. Now he's going to roll to his right, gets rid of it, has to throw it away. Receiver in the area was for Oliver Springs. Jordan Gray, another sophomore on this team. Yeah, the Mike linebacker for, for Kingston came in, giving five on the rush. Uh, Bokey had to roll, roll to his right and just got rid of the ball. Uh, sometimes that's the best throw you got. Instead of trying to force something, throw it away, get to second down. Now, one thing we need to mention, and you can you can kind of see down here, there is a number three on the Oliver Springs sidelines. That is an injured, talented sophomore, Jackson Jett. And he's a big part of what Oliver Springs wants to do. As Day gets the handoff, he's still on his feet. Oh, Fighting tackler oh, still on his feet. Oh, all the way up, he's going to have the hammers first down. Wow. A pickup of about 13 on second and 10. What a run by Mason Day. That's that fight we were talking about that this bunch will have uh, in, during the pregame show. Uh, they just, you know. And there's Jet. You see Football is his back. Last week against South Pittsburgh. Heard, heard about that this week, yeah. 
and Jet is extremely talented, a big part, like I said, of what Auburn Springs wants to do. And quickly, here's Bokey, fires this one out incomplete over the head of his intended target, Dakota Adkins. That'll bring up second 10. Mike Backer was coming again right there. They picked it up. Uh, picked, the, picked the blitz up pretty well right there. Saboki so brings his team back up to the line. They're going to stay in that formation, twin sets, with Mason Day in the backfield. because you're getting so much penetration yeah. from Kingston? Yeah, when you catch him really teeing off on the ball, uh, you'll run freeze or go on two. You know, that's what we did in the old days, we go on two. But with snow huddle stuff, you just call freeze and then you call the next play that doesn't work. So gifted five yards is Oliver Springs, second and five. Handoff goes to Day, Day up the middle, and Day again with a great run. Gets it all the way up to about the 31-yard line, and he has his helmet ripped off, and he's excited. And there's a penalty here, and we're going to have to see what it is. I don't know. Let's see what that is. Officials are conferring. I'm not a lip reader. I was trying to read what he was saying. We got a personal foul, face mask. Okay, so it was, Day's helmet was ripped off, apparently, is, is the thing. Because it was came off during a penalty, he can come back in now. He doesn't have to leave for one, one play. So that's also the advantage. Yeah. Plus, it gets you down to what? The 16 yard line. Hammers first and 10 at the 16 yard line. For Oliver Springs, finding some success here. And this time, they go back to that two-back set. Adkins, actually, Adkins is going to be the single back. And Day's going to step up to a halfback kind position. A wing position. And uh -oh, Adkins uh -oh. finds some running room up the middle. Going for the end zone. He's got his eyes set on six. But he will come up Just short. short. Just short. But that is first and goal, Oliver Springs. That was nice blocking at the point of attack. And then once he found the crease coming backside, he took it. And that was, that was a nice run. A nice hard run. The offensive line for Oliver Springs right now has got a rhythm. And, and you'll notice they, they're coming off the ball really well right now. So now two back set. Bokey and Adkins. And Day. And Day's going to line up in like a fullback position. And get the handoff straight up the middle. He's reaching for the end zone. He's there. Touchdown, Man. Oliver Springs. 6.37 left to go in the first quarter. We are an extra point away from a tie ball game. 80-yard drive right there. They responded to the Kingston score. Good teams do that. Good teams will do that. What a response by Oliver Springs. As Bokey also, the place kicker for this team. He will line up to attempt the point after. Oh, we're missing one. Adkins will hold. Still 15 seconds on the play clock, plenty of time. Snap, set, kick is up, and that kick is good. good. We've got one for you, folks. Seven all as Kingston takes on Oliver Springs with 6.37 left in the first quarter of your OEB Law Game of the Week. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30-plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. And welcome back to your OAB Law Game of the Week. Oliver Springs ties it up here. Got some scores of interest for you in the second quarter. Bearden leads.
leads Alcoa six to nothing. Wow. Anderson County leads Science Hill three to nothing. That one early in the first. Powell leads Farragut in the first seven to nothing. Uh, Maryville up on Knox Central seventeen to nothing, and Coalfield up on Oneida six to nothing early in the first quarter. So for your Davis Funeral Home kickoff, Lee and Boki gets set to kick this one off. Back deep to receive for Kingston is Carcel Whitehead. Standing, what, is this about the 16, 15? He's not expecting a deep kick. Davis Funeral Homes from two locations to serve you, Harriman and Warburg. Visit davisfunerhomes.com for more information. And it is not a long kick. It's taken at the 26-yard uh -oh. line. But setting uh -oh. up a great return, this is Keaton Swicegood. Swicegood into Oliver Springs territory before he's finally run out of bounds. About the 30-yard line. Keaton is another one of those sophomores Coach Panky was talking about this week. Um, they expect big things. And, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing watching young players step up. So I think the idea is to pooch that one just up in the air to help uh, get some defenders down there to get the tackle, but that one might not have gone high enough as it was Bokey, the last man possible to get that stop that ended up cutting Whitehead off. Yeah, the, the old pooch kick was, was good to us, uh, but you, if you don't get it high enough and you don't get down and cover it, that's what happens. Rylan Gatner, quarterback for this team, sends three wide outs to his right. Got a tight end to the left, kind of a wing set to the right. Most folks play that as a trip, just like they're doing. Sweet. And here's Carcel Whitehead with the carry, and he is going to be met right over the line of scrimmage. Short pickup on the play. And another helmet comes off, you see on the Chuck Fleischman replay. Dakota Adkins there first. Short gain, second and long is always a hard call. But after a great return, Kingston already in Oliver Springs territory. Gettner now with Hamilton. Two back. And Whitehead back there. Handoff goes to Hamilton. And Hamilton gets up to about the 21-yard line, and he'll be close in first down. I'm telling you, when, when, so far, when Kingston gets in that two backs, it's hey, diddle, diddle, right down the middle. They're just bringing the power inside. And uh, they scored on the last drive with that and, and got a nice gain right there. Now they're third and short. This is a much more manageable call. And coming up from that linebacker spot for all spring is Cooper Jones, the sophomore, had a chance to make that play. But Hamilton broke the tackle. Third and two. Handoff. Now they take it wide. And this is going. Ooh. He gets up to about the 20-yard line. That's going to be really close to the first that down. Be really close. On that second effort. Let's see where the spot is. And Whitehead. It looked He's like just he a bit short. It looked like he was going to be stopped at the no, line of scrimmage. No, they call it first down. Call watch it this first down. On the Chuck Flash replay, watch the second effort. Yeah, got his hand down, kept digging. Because Cole Jackson was there in the backfield. But Whitehead just kept digging, got just enough for the Hammers first and ten. Gettner this time has Kane Ladd in the backfield. Wing back in motion. They're going to fake the jet sweep, and we've got to stop and play. Flag. Offsides. Ooh, and offsides on Oliver Springs. And now that hammer's first down is cut in half. Yeah, he must have uh, lined up. I didn't see anybody jump into the neutral zone. Tight end wing down here on the left. Offensive left. 
Just on the bottom. Nope. Somebody move. <laughs> and the good Lord taketh away, Aaron. That's right. A five-yard penalty. That'll make the Hammers first down, a first and ten again. Now, the question I always had was, do I run the same play that I had called or do I call something different here? This would be three downs in a row. Exactly. So, it, I mean, it looks like it. Man in motion. Now, here's Gatner. He's going to keep it on the quarterback sweep and makes the first man miss, but Gatner is dropped after a pickup of about two. Yeah, uh, you can see Oliver Springs penetrated the edge pretty well. Gatner broke that tackle, but here comes the cavalry. Yeah, we'll see that on this Chuck Fleischman replay. Makes him miss, and then here comes the, here comes the cavalry. Yeah, it was Cole Jackson breaking the containment to slow Gettner down. Pick up of two, second and eight. I think we're going to see a pass. Oh, no, we're going to back up some more. And that's a false start. So Kingston... Looks like he's going to take a timeout. Brian Panky wants to see what is going on out there. He doesn't look happy. This timeout brought to you by Patterson's Appliances. Visit PattersonAppliances.com. Check out the new current cash saving promotions. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Back to the OAB Law Game of the Week. One play was run. Just one. And let's see, Kingston went up five, back five, up two, back five. And now we'll face a second and 13. Yeah, one step forward, two steps back. Uh, you know, and Coach Panky uh, called the timeout to get his guys settled down, get them uh, refocused, if you will, uh, to get, get this ball in. Coach Harper was getting his guys fired up and keep playing hard. So. Gadner looks like he's going to throw, and he does. That pass is almost picked off. Ooh, wow. Going up in the air and getting a big paw on that one was Cooper Jones. That, that, was, uh, that was a scary play. Um, had good pressure on the quarterback, which really kind of sets up the bad throw. Uh, Jones is able to knock the ball down. Had he pulled it in, I'm not sure who would have stopped him between there and the end zone. Gatner, the quarterback on that play, you said was under a lot of pressure. He threw off his back foot, and it was very short. I don't know if that one just came out of his hand wrong or what, but regardless, we've got third and 13 for Kingston. Kane Ladd in the backfield. And Ladd will get the handoff running from right to left. Ladd pushes the pile forward about a yard. A flag. But a flag comes out. You want to speculate what it is? Uh, I didn't see the hold, but that's what they're calling. And Oliver Springs may decline this thing. I was going to say it's third down, go to fourth down, right? Yeah, see what Coach Harper wants to do. So it was third and about 13. Now, you also do have to recognize, okay, so they are going to decline this, which will bring up fourth and, I don't know, maybe, uh, let's see, fourth and 11, about, about, about 13. Oh, yeah. Now, Kingston could elect to bring in Littlefield. I would say he's definitely good within this range.
Marshall not letting Kingston sub. There we go. Now the play clock's cranked. So Kingston will elect to go for it. Ladd in the backfield with Gatner. Loaded left side with a tight end and an H-back. And here's Gatner under pressure. He's having to scroll out to his right. Let's this one go. The pass is up and incomplete. Wow. And Oliver Springs will take over on downs. That is a big stop, guys. That is a big stop. Kingston gets a nice return down to the 30. They end up taking possession, what, at the 26, 24? Yeah. You can tell Kingston doesn't throw a lot, but if you watch this Chuck Fleischman replay, that ball almost went into the area of the number 22 there, Peyton Witter. Yeah, I, I, I like the design of that play, actually, because if you overthrow it, you've got a backstop on the, on the back corner of the end zone there. So a score of interest, we just saw it was West leading Clinton, I believe, by a score of 24 to nothing. So West is still West, if, in case you were wondering. West is still West. So here's Bokey on this Hammers first and 10, and that pass is complete all the way up to about the 29-yard line, and got that one to Jordan Gray, a sophomore on this team. Pickup of, let's call it, seven. Yeah. Second long three. On first down, that's a win. Aaron, that's a win. Absolutely it is. Offers for Rings. A tie ball game with under two minutes left to go in this first quarter and ahead of the chains. Bokey, handoff, Day. Day looks for running room. And he will have enough for the Hammers first and ten. I believe you're right. Pick up of about five. There go the chains. So watch this Chuck Fleischman replay here. Oh, this is from the play before, but there's the, the first down play that set up the Mason Day first down run. Yeah, when you can win on first down, uh, the second down and third down calls are so much easier. Uh, second and long is a hard call. Third and long is a really hard call. Hammers first and 10. Handoff goes to Day again. Day looking for running room around the left side. Picks up about four. You know, Oliver Springs is staying really patient, which, which I really like. They're kind of finding that identity. I was talking with Coach Alexander at Tennessee Tech last weekend. And he said there's two things that guys think they can always do, right? And it's barbecue on the grill and call plays on offense. Uh, he said, but until you've got the headset on and the play clock's rolling, you know, you don't really understand that pressure. So uh, Oliver Springs is really staying patient here. I like what they're doing. And off again. And student body right picks up another hammers first and ten. We do have a flag at about the 39-yard line here on the near sideline. And that is an illegal procedure penalty on Oliver Springs, and that'll cost him five yards and a first down. Yeah, and it's not a five-yard from the spot of the ball. It's five yards from the previous line of scrimmage. So. Yeah, so Oliver Springs set up really well there with a second and about four. Instead, with a five-yard penalty, it'll be a second and 11, and that may be the last play of this first quarter. I believe it will be. We'll make sure, though. Yeah, they're going to let the clock run out here. Hope he's going to make them think that maybe they will, though. But they won't. That's the end of the first quarter. Oliver Springs has come to fight. The Bobcats strike back after Kingston takes its opening drive to the house. It's 7-7 here at the OEB Law Game of the Week. Daniel
Robert Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Daniel Forrester has been... When should you get tested for COVID-19? You have symptoms of COVID-19, such as runny nose, congestion, sore throat, fever, cough, shortness of breath, muscle pain, headache, chills, or loss of taste or smell. Current testing recommendations say everyone should get tested immediately if they have symptoms of COVID-19. If you have symptoms, be sure to follow recommendations about how long to stay home and away from others. For more information, visit our If You Are Sick or Test Positive webpage. Welcome back to the OAB Law Game of the Week as we get set to begin the second quarter. Some scores of interest for you. Jellico leads Oakdale 13-8, to that one in the first quarter. It is Bearden leading Alcoa at halftime, 6-3. to three. At the beginning of the second quarter, Anderson County leads Science Hill 3 to nothing, And towards the end of the first quarter, Powell leads Farragut 14 to nothing. Oh, and Oneida trails Coalfield in the second quarter 14 to nothing. Okay. The uh, Beard and Alcoa score is a little bit surprising to me. Bokey. Tries to hit the targets there. That falls incomplete. Trying to find Jaquan Benton. And so you'll have third and 11. That second and 11 calls hard. Third and 11 is hard as well. Uh, probably feel like they've got to put the ball in the air. Hmm. Uh, he was open. He was open. He was open, but pressure kind of, you know, makes you jerk the throw one way or the other. That release point changes. So third and long for Oliver Springs. Three-man front for Kingston. So they're dropping eight. Pressure. And, and Boki just has to get rid of it. And he got hit. And you'll see the check there for $1,000 held by the Oliver Springs cheerleaders. OAB Law, excited to be a part of Rivalry Thursdays on Knox 7, ABC, WATE 6, and Fox 43. OAB Law, Playoff Fridays, and our game of the week as well. And OAB Law loves to give back to the communities they serve. And throughout the season, OAB Law will be highlighting the homeschool of that week's game. As always, making that $1,000 homeschool donation during the regular season. We thank OAB Law. Yeah, that's that. a better punt. That's a beautiful punt. It's taken over his head, and that is Gettner on the return. Gettner looking for room up the left side, and he is going to be tackled. And that's a great open field tackle that time for Oliver Springs. Yeah, that was a great open field tackle. Coverage pretty good. Uh, the punt was much better than the first first punt, obviously. And on that yep. tackle, that open field tackle is Michael Widden. A senior, one of the only seniors on this Oliver Springs team. And Kingston will take over with the Hammers first and 10 at the Yellow Jacket 40-yard line. So Gettner in the backfield. Looks like he's got that tight end and slot back to his left. Hand off. Cut back. Uh-oh. And he's quick. In the open field to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Nobody will catch him. Touchdown, Kingston. Carcel Whitehead. 60 yards on the carry. Well, that was a nice run. Uh-oh. I didn't see the though. flag. I didn't see the flag. And so we're hearing that it's going to be a taunting penalty. But you see that Chuck Flash from replay. Whitehead started left and went back to his right. Oh, uh, there it was. There it was. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Kingston. 
Touchdown is good. There's Andy Cross the line before he taunted. So it will be enforced on the kickoff. Kingston will be kicking from the 25. Yeah. I thought that an unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, the extra point is good, but we see that on the replay. I thought an, I thought an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty uh, would it takes takes the touchdown away. It's supposed to if it happens in the field of play. What the officials probably said there was he was crossing the end zone, the goal line as he was doing that. Now the replay, I I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. Well, Kingston fires back. 11:26 left to go in the first half. It's Yellow Jackets 14, Auburn Springs 7. 1952. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next. Welcome back to the OEB Law Game of the Week. A 15-yard penalty marked off, and as Coach Shoemaker told you, Littlefield will have to kick this one off from his own 25. So we probably won't see a touchback this time. Yeah, we'll see a return, I do believe. And back deep to receive for Oliver Springs, who's probably happy he finally gets to return one, is Benton on this Davis Funeral Home kickoff. High spinner taken at about the 11-yard line by Benton. Benton looking for room upfield, makes the first man miss. Hits that hole and runs into one of his blockers. Got and we got another flag that comes out. We'll have to see what it is, but the ball is spotted at the 39-yard line of Oliver Springs. There's two flags, actually. It's two flags on the same penalty. Personal foul, face mask, case, ooh. Ooh. So after a 15-yard penalty, they'll move the ball up all the way to the Kingston 45-yard line. Kicked it off from the 25, and Oliver Springs goes on offense on the 45. Our story starts with a promise made to the community. So Hammers first and 10 for Oliver Springs. Man in motion, that's Atkins. Atkins will get it on a sweep. He's on the edge. Going from right to left, looking for running room, and closing in on that was Kane Ladd for Kingston. Slowed Atkins down, and it'll end up with a pickup of four. They were able to string that pretty well. I thought they had the edge there for a minute, but Kingston responded really quickly to that. So that, that was a nice play by the Kingston defense just to give up four. Because as that play started to develop, it looked like a bigger play. So second six for Oliver Springs trailing this game now 14 to seven with 10 and a half minutes left in the first half. Bokey sends a man in motion. That's Atkins again. This time they're going to fake the handoff, and we've got to stop in play. Flag on the sideline would indicate a false start, and it does. And so that negates that four-yard gain on first down, so Oliver Springs will have a second and 11 instead. We saw this the last series, didn't we? One of the dues we had listed for Oliver Springs was to find that identity early, and I think they found that offensively. Uh, 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 you know, it's, it's really nice seeing they, they're throwing when they have to, had a nice play um, in that first, second series, and they're running the ball really well. Second 11. Bokey handoff day. Day looking for room around the right side. He's got some. Back 
to the 41. So a pickup of five will bring up, uh, let's see, third and six. Third and six. Uh, this is probably two down territory, just to be honest with you, especially if you get some positive yardage here on third down. Do have a scoring update for you in the second quarter with about 12 minutes left. Wartburg leads Harriman seven to nothing. Ooh, okay. So now, looks like a double wing kind of set from Oliver Springs as they ooh, hand ooh. off. Mash that right at the line of scrimmage. And Day gets nothing. That'll bring up fourth and six. The, yeah, they, they, they trapped and kicked out, but the, uh, the, they didn't get the linebacker sealed off. Yeah, so Kane Ladd able to step in there and make the play. Exactly. So now Alvarez Rings faced with a decision. Fourth and six. Looks like we're going for it. Well, you got to remember, too, Boki's the punter, right? That's true. Yeah. Or, no, Atkins is the punter. Boki's the kicker. That's right. And it does look like they're going.